Hi, welcome back. My name is Carrie Waltz. I try to share tips, tools, and techniques to help the artist and sharing things that have helped me hopefully will help you as well. Today we're working with pastels. I'm using U Art Grit 400 and I'm going to be beginning the underpainting with new pastels. So take a look. This is the scene I'll be using. I'll superimpose it somehow on the video, uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is UART Grit 400. I've done just a quick little sketch. I did this as my thumbnail. It, this little arch represents the light I should have left back here. The dark comes from the background, curves around, and kind of catches up with this foreground hill. And I think I'm ready to begin. I'm starting with a new pastel, N-U-P-A-S-T-E-L by Prismacolor. It's a nice dark. I don't want to press too hard. I'm just looking, kind of squinting at the darks on my paper. And so I'm leaving off this second tree. But this one will curve kind of in and then up. And I'm leaving off another tree, but moving one over another one over. So isn't that neat that we as artists can move trees and mountains if we so choose. All right, I want to ground that one. This is kind of the top of a, a hill. There's dark in the distance. Little bits of other shadows ca casting a bit across the, the drive. I'll make that tree a little fatter. It's a lot fatter. Oh well. That's okay. I'll figure it out. And a little bit of foliage. That's the uh, dark, dark blue. Now I'm going to use a rather dark pink, kind of a magenta, where the light green is going. Light hand over here, a little bit more here. Because the pink is opposite of the green so i'm going to just do a little bit of that and play with it you don't have to do opposites there's so many things you can do with the underpainting but i'm going to try complementary a little bit today and see how it goes uh, in some cases the, it's kind of a violet drive so i'm going to put yellow right now opposite of blue is orange so I'm going to put a little orange in the sky. Whoop. Not a very clean pastel. Okay, that's messy enough. All right. I now have rubbing alcohol like you get at the grocery st store or the drug store. I have an old brush that I've given a haircut to. And uh, the only place I'm going to really be sort of careful is the directional strokes that belong to these trees. That one kind of got lost in this other one, but we'll figure it out when it's time to paint it. I don't really like how that happened. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move a tree. I don't want it that close together. I'm going to make this one. Right, about right here. Made that up. Just make this one a little bigger so it's big enough to withstand the weight of all those branches. And raise the ground a little bit. That, yeah, you can raise the ground. The joys of being a an artist, you can move things. Okay. When I lay in the, the lighter tones, I really probably should have laid them in first so my alcohol wouldn't be so dirty. I'm going to come back and kind of do that before I do any more of the, the dark blue. Not that there's much left. The orange is lighter. Guy doesn't have to be all perfect. Let's see, 
what alcohol does, water actually does the same thing. It'll dissolve the pastel, but water doesn't dry as fast as alcohol does. So that's why I prefer to use the alcohol. I want to use it in a way that it strengthens what's going on in the background. I don't mind if it drips. There's times I don't want it to drip, but in this painting, I, it's not a, a problem. If I want that to drip the other way, like the branches coming out, then I can always flip it this way. So then if it drips a bit coming up, it's kind of like foliage in the background. I kind of like that's what it is. I didn't get this part first. So. But I do like the fact that the orange is the sky and the pink is the green in the ground. If you get something too dark you, before it, it dries, you can kind of push up, lift up. These are old brushes. I can push this color into it. I can pick it up in my brush and, and uh, carry it into part of the painting. I might want to emphasize that. Br branches crisscross all the time. It's not good to have, see, like all of these coming at the same point. But a lot of that's going to be covered up anyway, so that doesn't even matter. Sometimes I do sideways strokes when I'm working with trees just to emphasize that texture of the bark. Didn't quite get this area done, so I'm going to come back. Once it dries, you can even come back over it again if you want to. But the initial wash, what it does is it sets the pastel to where when I add things onto it now, it this initial underpainting will uh, remain. It, it won't be uh, blended physically. You'll just see it up underneath. Okay, I do like how I lightened up part of that trunk. So I'm going to do that a little bit on this one. Might need a better brush, but paper towel is also helpful. And a little bit on this one back here. It's a little too solid. So now when I lighten this up, and if I lost it, which sometimes I do, I can come back and lay that back in. Ooh, I think I picked up the black. Do not like the black. This doesn't have as much life as a blue. So let's see what happens when that gets wet. That's pretty thick all the way up. The one thing I'll need to do when I paint this is I'll need to make, I oh, <laughs> had it in my hand, I'll need to make a, a hole in between there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in some of that color. Separate. Might not be enough, but that at least remind me that I want some openness there. Now this has to dry. I decided to add a little bit of the definition in the back. I switched brushes. That's too much detail. Too much detail. Much darker back here. Don't need, uh, reminder. Add the add the trunks after the foliage. Maybe. All right, I'm gonna come back with my alcohol and I'm gonna lift off some more of this tree. Matter of fact, I might even just move it over. So it's not so crowded. Now it's really confusing, isn't it? Mm, it happens.
I don't want anything that dark. That black really was a mistake. Let it dry. When it comes to painting trees, it's really hard not to get too spotty, especially in the fall. So squinting helps a lot. I want to squint and find the darkest, coolest green in the distance. And I'm going to exaggerate that green a bit and probably have it more of a blue-green. I'm going to see if this will be enough distant green. There's a little back in here, but not a whole lot that you can see. That's coming up, so I want it a little warmer. That's even darker. I'm going to put that kind of leading in. Shadow in here. Now the shadow on the on the road here should not be the same color. Okay, I want another cooler, cooler green. That might be. Yeah, that's that's all right for a distance. I don't want it the same green as over here because I want that to read further away and that green comes up a little higher okay I'm gonna mute it just a tad to make it a little more dull but let's put maybe some pink in the sky first have some gradation between the pink and See what's nice about these trees being set? I can now go over it with a light color and it's not picking up that dark color that's in the sky. Okay, there's a lot lighter tone back in here. I kind of missed that on the road. This is much. See, I got carried away. And picked up the light. Pastels, you usually use dark to light. And I've kind of gotten away from that already. Let's go back and reestablish our trees. I want this one fairly warm. into the grass which has a lot of leaves and shadows in it but it's very warm warm shadows cool light I'll put some color back there I want to separate these trees branches. I want some of the sky to show through in a minute. But I'm not worried about it right now. All right, this is going to give me a definition between the trees that I lost earlier. And 
bluer tone. First, it went quite dark enough. I forget because I said I'm leaving. I'm, li I'm gonna make this tree wider. They'll touch here and then separate. Those two almost shape the same. Oh, our brain's like pattern. It's gonna be a separate tree though. I don't want this one. Slightly different. Let's go with a uh, more purple. What purple tree trunk? Yes, I want a different color than what I see. One is different. Oh, they are different colors in nature. This one's darker. That one's lighter. That has this is lighter brown. thing about painting when you don't have any students you don't have to I think I'm a little freer just to experiment and just pick up and play than um, thinking oh man they're gonna ask me why I picked that color sometimes I don't know I'm just playing I'm gonna see what what'll work all right this is bent up just a tad it warped just a little bit when I when I taped it down so that's kind of what I'm fighting with when it comes at the top I have to just turn my pastel kind of on its side rather, kind of lean it on its point rather than its side. There's not a lot of sky holes up here, so I kind of want to paint in where the sky is. Uh, I mean, uh, where the sky is not. Does that make sense? I'm painting negative space right now. I haven't painted the blue of the sky yet. I'll be painting that after I establish where the trees are. The trees that are in the front, I want them warmer than those that are in the distance. And that's a funky tree. I'm going to cut that off a bit. One thing I like about pastels, you can do light over dark, and it usually does quite well. I need a little darker green in the background and the shadows in here. Not worried about the uh, trunks right now. I'll put them in later, but I do kind of want to mimic how the leaves grow. And I'm squinting my eyes to see some of the darks and put that back in. And we're going to have some up close foliage in here, so that'll take care of some of that. The shadows on the ground need to be a different color, and I'm going to. Make them a little bluer, a little brighter, because I like color, and we'll see what happens. Add some blue to the trunk of this tree. Be a little bold with my color choice. Might be a little too bold, maybe a little too much. We will find out. All right, put a little bit of that up there. Squint. Is it the right shade? It's pretty close to the right color. Could have been a little darker. If it could have been a little darker, then I'll pick up another blue. And I'm going to make it a tad darker. Okay. Not bad. Okay, in the background here, I have a hill kind of a dead grass 
at least yellowed down grass. And since I put a space between those trees, I need to maintain that. Okay, that's either the front of a tree or we'll cover it up with uh I'll tell you what, that needs to be lighter. That's too yellow, it needs to be lighter. Brings the eye back there. Then I want the light of the, the ground to be warm. So I'm going to go with kind of a pale pink for the light on the road. Speckled light on the road. Okay, then when it gets over here, it turns a little more brown. Since the road is pink, I'm going to use just a little more of the pink along the roadside first. It's going to go up the hill. I need a little more dark in the back because we've got to have enough back there for the foreground. Oh, that's too dark for the foreground trees. Yeah, to uh, want a few, of the, a little bit of that in the distance. But it goes up about two-thirds of the way on our canvas. And then there's some paleness on top of that. And that's a cooler green, so that can be in the distance. Some of the, the uh, underpainting can show through. I'm barely touching. And let's put some more of this in the grass. Okay, I am noticing that um, there is a little bit of the driveway that shows back there. I used pink here. I wanted a little kind of a pinky lavender here. So I'm going to continue with that lavender feel. But I want it a little um, darker because it's kind of in the shadows back there. And that needs to be broken up. That's too too solid. The top part of it is in shadow underneath these trees. So change the directional shape. Okay, that's not even going to show because there's all sorts of foliage there. All right, I'm going to, with my finger, just barely smear out some of this back there to neutralize the pink that's coming through. Probably be better to do this with something other than your finger. And I can blur that too. I'm going to bring a little bit of other green in through there or just, you know, just soften those edges. See how that just, it's, it's there but it's not kind of thing. All right, I want this grass to be a little more solid. But I'm also letting some of the dirt show through it because this is toward the end of summer, getting closer to fall. There'll be a little bit of greenery hanging down from the trees, catching the light back there. And that's just by dragging some. I mean, I'm just laying this down and Lightly dragging it a little bit. A lot more greenery over here. Okay, now I want this darker. So darker and warmer. That was a pretty cool. So this is darker, warmer. Warmer means it has more yellow in it. Still want some of that background to show. Yeah. A lot of pale. Oh light color it's a broken piece but low growing uh, greenery along the edge kind of going over the dirt okay we're about ready oh, let's see a little more light back in here light green i think that needs to be even brighter paler it's really pale back here yeah there we go 
catching the light just a little bit through here. Chunk of it right in here. And then we'll go with the yellower green. Yellower green right in here. Need to get some more of that gold color, but I'm going to make it a little darker because it's not going to be quite as in the light as that was. Warming up this just a bit, make it more dirt like. Uh, need more orange in that. Kind of a rusty orange. Start to, that's pretty bright. I do like color, but that's not dark enough. I come back over it with a warm brown. No, I kind of want to keep the browns out of here. It's more of this color, but it's dark terracotta, I guess. Okay, these little bushes, shrubbery, casting some shadows in here. I'm looking for some negative space. There's a lot of that color. And through here, okay, the road's a little too pink. I'm going to tone it down. I want it bluer than that. Main thing I need to keep, keep the value right. I had it a little light. It's brighter back in here, which it is, so I'm happy about that. I'm going to pick up another dark bluish purple, maybe. There we go. Okay. Probably should have put some of those. Uh, probably should have put some of the foliage up there first. Carrie, you know better than that. Okay. Where the light comes back up, I'm going to add more back into there. foliage that's around the trunks of the tree. I want to add that before um, I do any more with the trunks because some of that's going to cover. All right. It's kind of a yellow green right in through here. Ooh, that's not bright enough. scruffy foliage in through here. We can come out this kind of rock your pastel back and forth. And that 
gives it a nice uh, organic feel to it. It's really, really bright through here. It's catching the light. I want enough variation in here that it separates itself from the grass below. I need to carry some of this. It's over in here. And down below, it's not quite that bright. But it's lighter than what's there. Gold color. Lighter. I need lighter color. Kind of this orangey gold. Yeah, that'll work. If I can't get the right color, then I'm just looking for value. I'm trying to line the light ground up where it runs into a light, and then it's darker where the shadow continues. So break that up just a little bit. There's some light trunks in through here. Not exactly that color, but it's light, so that'll work. I don't like that one. I want it leaning in just a little bit more, a little, a little more lavender. Okay, and then no, that's looking pretty good for over there. Little light, random. I want a little shadow on that bark. So because it's so tiny, I'm getting a new pastel out and uh, come down the edge. This is kind of a plum color pastel. Whoop. Rolling it across, giving some darker textural strokes. Rolling it up. It's hard to see from probably where you are. I'll zoom in and show this process. I usually use this kind of rock. Ooh. When I Sorry about the shake. When I step back, I don't like how that bright line takes you off the page. So I'm just going to get some of that neutral green and knock that back down. So it's just suggested, but it doesn't pull your eye off. And then I realized I haven't added any blue to my sky. Now, do I have to? No, but I think I will. Okay, I'm going to look for a very pale blue. Very, very pale. And work on some sky holes. Make sure I'm putting in the sky where it makes sense. It's okay if some of the orange still shows through. But you don't want it too, too spotty. When you can, lay it down. Have broader strokes. That just keeps it from being too speckled. I'm going to drag some of that pink that I had. Oop. It's not laying flat. Some of these pastels, even though they're, well, they're, they're handmade, so they're not exactly uniform. There's a beauty about that, and sometimes it's a little frustrating because you want to lay it flat, and it doesn't exactly have a flat side. It's it, it's varied. Now, note when you're dealing with sky holes that um, when you're looking in between filtered light of trees, that the sky holes should probably be a tiny bit darker 
than when you know they're just out in the open. Now I'm making that a little darker just because you can see further up the zenith of your sky. A little bit in here, just looking in the picture to see where how high the sky goes up. And we haven't even put the red leaves in that drew my attention to this piece in the first place. So I think it's about time for that. I worked on this yesterday and came back and tried to sit back and evaluate how I felt I was doing on the painting. And overall, I'm really happy with it. I want to emphasize just a touch more uh, edges in here where the ground meets the road and break this solid up just a touch more and maybe have some more streaks that go across. So I've laid out my pastels where I know the ones that I used yesterday. I had them separated, which is very helpful. So I'm going to just, I mean, again, a light, 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 light touch. So I wanted to, I don't want that exact same color in, in the ground. Um, I want a darker tone because of the, a cast shadow takes on the color of what it's hitting. So if you make your cast shadows all the same color, whether they're on the cement or on the dirt, then it's not going to read right. So I'm just adding just a little dark on the edge of that. I don't want it to, to catch too much attention, but I wanted a little more than what I had. I want to come back. I had some pink in this back part to add a little bit of warmth, and I'm going to have just a little bit of that sprinkled in here, um, filtered light, so to speak. And that dark spot catches my eye. When I squint and compare the two, pretty much I'm happy. There's a couple of areas through here that I could make a little darker. So I'm going to get my dark green again, and um, I'm trying to push back paint behind the trees in between the, the shrubs so one will stick out more than the other. The dark pushes, pushes it back. See right here when I squint, these are about the same. So if I add a little dark around one of those, and you don't want to make a halo effect, but, um, but that pushed that forward. Now that's too flat because it's all one color. So I just come back and get a couple of little highlights. Because this is what, this is my my focal point. At one point, I really like drawing that viewer's eye down the path. But now I'm looking, it's like, hmm, do I want that to be my story? Or do I want to put in the, green, the red foliage that caught my attention the first time? So I'm going to do both and hope they don't fight each other. Sometimes sometimes we um, artists have a hard time editing and we want to put everything in that we see and it really doesn't help the situation. I'm getting this bluish green one and I'm going to push back just a little bit in here. Cool down some of the, the background. It could be darker. Actually, it needs to be darker because that's now reading... The same distance as that and I want that to be farther so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna get the dark blue I'm gonna see how that'll do I'm gonna push could push it back yeah like that better I can add some of that down in here I can add some of that also to some of the shadows in here it's the right value and it's different from, from that. I'm going to add a little more of this darker turquoise back in here. That line was too hard. I want blur back there most of the time. Okay, leave that alone. I'm going to now look at the foliage. I'm Looking at the area back in here, I'm going to look for the darkest of the red, which is almost, uh, it's kind of a, kind of an orange, a burnt orange. And I'm, I'm going to be ever so light with the touch. I'm laying it down. Again, uh, when you lay it down, it's less spotty. 
kind of covering a large amount of space at a time, giving the feel of leaves without drawing leaves. Now this is where I probably shouldn't have gone so heavy with the trunks before because um, sometimes it's better to draw in your foliage before you do your trunks. But I'll just work on covering that up and letting it show through at times. So I'm just squinting to see where where this red is and I don't want it all to be the same color time. There's a little bit Oops, I picked up some dirt. There's a little bit down in here. There's some between the trees. Oh, and I noticed, in, in, I was looking at the video, and I noticed this, this center part here, if I went all the way back, that should not be that bright. That should be that darker green color. Now, there might be some closer trees showing up. I mean, some foliage. But to follow the line along there from the distance, that should not have been so light. And I'm going to go back and make it even darker with this darker green and just lay in the, the variation there. I think that's better. It makes more sense to me. Before I get too carried away with the red, I'm going to add some lighter tones to some of these trees. And hopefully, I'm just, I'm just trying to use the same colors that I've already used. This is when I wish it was a flat pastel. Sometimes they're easier to, I mean, when it's squared off rather than round, sometimes I have a an easier time. I'll just tip it on its end and draw it in. Sorry, you probably can't see what I'm doing. You want to add variety to your trees. So I'm not going to do that all the way up. Oh, let's go with more of a gray brown. Some of these pastels are really gritty, and this depending on the color. And this one kind of seems to be I can just hear it scratching. All right, so I'm going to take that red all the way up here to uh, keep your eye from just going off the page. And this is not the brightest that I'm going to use. I'm just laying in that right now. And there's some of this that is in the light, and it's much lighter. So I'm going to sprinkle some of that in through here. Just gives the feel of sunshine. And if I don't feel it's picking up enough, then I'll press down a little harder. But man, be careful about, about getting too too heavy-handed uh, in spots. Okay, I've kind of covered up that tree. I'm going to have to come back. I want that tree in front of that foliage. So, so I'm just going to come back and put it back in. This is where this is one thing I learned from Albert Handel, where you roll your pastel. You can create some really organic branches by doing that. And put some of that back here. Too. Maybe. Nah, I don't need to. I don't need that much detail back there. Okay, so I added some light to this tree. I want a little more brightness to it. So occasionally I'm just going to add a little bit more. And if that's catching the light, then this other one back here, which I made it a little more purple. Believe it or not, I have used very little what I would consider brown. Little peaks through there. All right, there are some branches that are catching the light. And I'm not exactly sure which one they're coming from, but I'm going to roll a couple of light branches. You look at that and you go, hmm, did that really need that? Well, it needs something under it if I keep it. If I keep it, I need the dark with it. I don't mind that. Let's just put some 
orange or tones over it. And I'm going to sprinkle some of this darker out here now that I have some of that lighter tones. And now I want some deeper, brighter red because it really was a beautiful morning. And I want this red to be, oh, like stop and look at me. So now I'm, I don't want to put too, too much. But I definitely want you to see that, oh wow, it's gorgeous. A little more solid. Connecting them. And then I can put some harder tones in there. I might even come back with an oranger tone. I'm not sure if that's on it. Feels like the same thing I just had. But it's from the same set, so it's just slightly different. Let me get this one. Remember, orange is the warmest tone, warmest color on the color wheel. And if you want to create light. Now, there we go. That's, that's more like it. Okay. Um, I'm happier with that. Put a little bit of that back here, make that a little more solid. I keep backing up and looking. There's a lot of random branches that I could add. I might add just, just a few more rolling off. I mean, again, I'm barely touching my... Ooh. Let's put some sticks and scrub, scrub brush, whatever you want to call it, down here. I'm going to add some lighter tones in here with some of the colors that I've already used. Some of this is in the light, so it's going to be brighter. So I want to pick some darker colors. Rock it back and forth. That just that just gives a nice uh, organic feel. Again, these are handmade pastels, so um, the edges are, are, are varied, but that, that's okay. All right. I'm going to back up and look at that. And this is too much one color. So I want to add light to it. That looks like the same color. So I'm going to come back with some lighter yellow just to break it up. I don't want it all, all to read the same color. Add some ground clutter. I think I like that. I think I like that better. All right. I'm going to... Now there's a little bit more off over here. Let that just kind of trail off the page. That pulls my eye a little bit, so I want to want to mute that just a touch. Okay, looking at the trees, I want to add a little more light. This one is all reading flat. I don't have any definition in the curvature of, of its trunk, so I want to add just a little bit. Um, this might be too light, but it's, it's some of the sky color. And if I just come in just ever so lightly, I don't want it all to read the same. Some of it I'm just doing straight up and down. Some of it I, I go back and forth. Oh, that's probably too light right there. And there are a few branches catching some light. You want to be strategic with that. I'm going to add some lighter tones down here. I like that better. Okay, now I'll go look at this other tree. This one right here doesn't have really any of that either. So I'm, while I have this in my hand, oops, that's probably too bright for that part. Light, light touch. Light, light touch. Just want it suggested. Okay. I'm going to call that done. If this has been helpful, if you have 
learn something and want me to continue things like that, please let me know in the comments. I do have a community tab now. You can communicate with me there. Let me know how I can help. Please subscribe if you haven't and give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of this.